Phoenix Commanders. Now that update 18 has dropped, and we have quite a bit more information regarding the Titan uh, itself and how the thermal core mechanic works, we're able to refine our builds for Maelstrom hunting with uh, all that information in mind. We've come up with three builds that we'd like to propose to the community with regards to what is quite effective at taking on Fargoid Titans and their latest and newest mechanics. Let's go through them one at a time and discuss their respective highlights. The first two builds are variations of the well-established and pretty popular so-called Titan Killer Crate build. Um, the Titan Killer Crate build is a Crate Mark II that is designed to be cold and relatively fast with repairs, cost of sync launchers, a heat sink launcher, and a Fargoid Pulse Neutralizer, which is required to get into Titan space to begin with. The variation that we're now proposing is a variation that uses four AX missile racks, ideally of the so-called serious pre-engineered variant. Uh, these are the best, as in highest damage, anti-xeno missile racks that you can equip, noting that they do come only from technology brokers aboard serious megaships, and they're actually quite expensive in terms of materials. So if for whatever reason you cannot acquire these um, serious missile racks, we instead recommend that you use the gimbaled version or, well, technically, actually, I apologies. Now I'm talking about the next build. But for this missile boat, you instead use the, uh, the fixed version of the enhanced missile racks. These are available for credits only at rescue megaships so are incredibly easier to acquire than the serious versions. They don't do a lot less damage, so candidly, if you don't want to go for a horrific grind for the materials that the serious version requires, these are totally fine. And as you can see, there's three of these uh, in the large configuration, then there's one of them in, a medium, in one of the two medium slots, and the other medium slot is occupied by one of the new nanite torpedoes. Uh, the nanite torpedoes, which here is represented by a torpedo pylon because Etsy doesn't have a nanite torpedoes yet, is um, also a uh, purchasable for credits module at rescue megaships. So it's very easy to acquire. Surprisingly, the torpedo pylon, the nanite torpedo pylon, is does not count against your experimental weapons limit. So even though you technically have five antixino weapons on this build, you do not need an experimental weapon stabilizer to use them. This configuration works particularly well, uh, even in a relatively small wing. Like our tests have shown that even a single Crate Mark II in a bomber setup is able to take up up to seven heat vents on their own. Maybe it will be possible to get eight with flawless kind of flying, and six is relatively achievable even with comparatively sloppy flying. But on average, you should be able to take down six to seven um, of those heat vents just by yourself. And with these number of missile racks, you're able to quite to do quite a bit of damage. Like looking at our uh, data, we have, let me see. We have this build on its own at Tyrannus, which has moderate damage resistance. Not that we know whether that actually does anything, but like we're still studying that. Um, that build on its own will do 30% core damage, being able to unload 71 rounds of those ser serious missile racks on the on the heat core, on the thermal core of the of the Titan, which means that three of these are sufficient uh, as they're able to take down all the vents, and uh, consequently have more time on target on the on the core itself to to get a core to zero all by themselves. Obviously, if you have four, it's a lot more convenient. And if you're going to bring three of these, you probably should drop the torpedo pile in on the third crate and put another missile rack because you only need two uh, two bombers with a nanite torpedoes in any particular instance. That's really the maximum you're ever going to need. With regards to why we're only using a medium torpedo pile in is the fact that um, heat vents on the Titan only require one torpedo to damage. And... And torpedo pylons come with a whopping 64 ammo. 
So <laughs> enough for quite a while uh, to go for quite a while just just with one um, with just with one ship. Furthermore, it is possible to synthesize ammo uh, for these nanite torpedoes with materials that are all things considered not all that expensive. So even if you were to run out of ammo on these high capacity torpedo pylons to begin with, uh, you will be able to synthesize ammo and keep going. So as far as the general purpose bomber build that you can think of in Titan space, I won't probably argue that this is the most flexible and the most convenient option for a reason that we're gonna get to in a moment as well. So if you're only building one ship to go after the Fargoid Titans, this is probably the ship that we'd recommend you build. And we've re but we've named this Titan Killer version 2.0B for Bomber. The additional benefit of having this build, moving on to the next build, is that you're in it's very, very easy to swap this build into a so-called V20F, which stands for fighter uh, variant of this build. Now, if you flip back and forth, you'll notice that pretty much the only things that change are having an enhanced Sino scanner on the fighter, which you will need to sub-target the hearts of interceptors and in general for target information on the thing that you're shooting, and swapping out the hard points so that you keep a single torpedo piling because why not? You want to be able to be a bomber if you need be and help out for those who uh, may need your assistance. And by the way, a medium multi-cannon doesn't do that much damage anyway, so kind of beyond the point. But if you want to swap this this nanite pylon for a Navi multi-cannon, by all means, go right ahead. And free gimbaled uh, enhanced uh, anti-xeno multi-cannons. Note these are not the Azimuth variant. The Azimuth variant runs too hot for this build to be cooled by the gimbaled beam laser, which is the one that cools the most. Uh, it cools more than the fixed and turreted versions. So um, you can't cool free adzies with just a medium beam, especially while, not while you're boosting in this crate. On the flip side, you can uh, cool free enhanced AX multi cannons, which makes this build overall much higher quality of life since it doesn't rely on heat sinks nearly as much. Uh, last but not least, the Azimov multi cannons are also gated behind a pretty significant. Uh, grind of materials, whereas the enhanced AX multi cannons can also be purchased simply for credits at your nearest rescue megaship. Again, if you build this ship, you basically have a very quick ability to swap between a bomber with four missile racks and a torpedo pylon and a fighter with free gimbal enhanced multi cannons and a thermal band beam laser, swapping one of the two caustic heat sinks for an enhanced Xeno scanner, which makes an incredibly versatile build. Uh, very easy to swap, very easy to change roles. You can also flex in between these setups as you want. Uh, if you feel like you want a thermal band beam laser because it gives you convenience in staying cold without relying too much on seatings, you can put it in the place of this missile rack. If you want um, to go full on fighter and drop the torpedo pylon for an enhanced medium gimbal, not that that does much, but if you want, you can. So you can play with these. And either way, these are two incredibly capable ships in their own respective roles. Uh, they have a 64 ton cargo rack for more or less endless repair limpets. They have the ability to repair themselves between the AFMU while staying incredibly cold. Uh, the ship under thrust, as you can see down here, sure you cannot see down here on the screen, but trust me, this ship under thrust stays at 18.5% heat, which means that unless you're boosting and you're not covered by your thermal band beam, you will not be detected by any patrols or scouts, nor the tourists, nothing will be firing on you, which makes for pretty effective stealth fighter and bomber. Now, moving on to the more controversial build, which um, is newer and kind of more specialized in nature, the Titan Bomber. Uh, the Titan Bomber also has a version 2.0 release as uh, in variation from what was originally envisioned before we knew much or anything about the Titan. We've uh, dropped a huge beam for uh, a separate um, couple of AX missile racks in order for it to be able to do some damage on the thermal core. Uh, we'd be using a large torpedo pylon, which has more ammo, but other than that functions equivalent to the medium torpedo pylon. This one will come with 128 nanite torpedoes, which will last for a very, very long time and can also be synthesized. Um, we're keeping the concordant sequence pulse laser 
as that is really the key feature of a shielded build in the spirit of operating in a wing. And we've dropped the regeneration sequence beam laser and instead replaced it with a gimbaled um, small beam laser, which replaces the thermal vent utility of what uh, was prior the huge beam. This is pretty much the same exact speed on boost uh, of a crate. It is quite a bit faster on boosted. Um, it has a lot less firepower. So if you're relying on bombers to also, also act uh, as damage dealers to the thermal core, this, this mama will be less effective than, than the crate, which has essentially double as many missile racks and consequently can do almost double as much damage in a given period of time. Um, however, this ship has shields and it has shields that are intended to be used in a concordant sequence wing, which is a bit of a type of a novel gameplay and which, it, again, this is, I think, the jury's out on this one. It may yield additional survivability long-term around the Titan. What are the benefits of shields around the Titan? Well, the first benefit is that shields protect you against uh, stray Fargoan missile strikes. Fargoan missile strikes uh, absolutely wreck your modules if you're unshielded. Uh, Fargoan missile strikes do not penetrate shields as far as your damage, module damage is concerned. So your modules as a whole are entirely protected so long as your shields is up and running. So in fact, this AFMU, which you have here, is really a tool of last resort or final resort, as if things work as they are supposed to work in this wing, you will never need to turn it on. The shield generator with the concordant sequence effect has just an OP effect of protecting you from damage so long as you're not actively taking damage. And considering the fact that going cold, it's relatively easy to get out of, uh, out of a crossfire and that the damage done around the Titan is comparatively contained considering the relatively small number of uh, hostiles that exist right now and the reduced aggro that they have after they, they changed their optics, as they said in the latest patch notes. Um, this, this shielded build, I personally found with, with our wing and the strike works, works pretty well. As many have pointed out correctly, this is a more specialized build. So it works if you care to make it work and you train and learn to make it work in a wing together with a group of folks who have been practicing with you on staying close, on keeping those concordant sequence beam on each other. In that case, you will see the miracles of the concordant sequence effect and just that how crazy fast your shields recharge and the fact that they will almost always be at 100% except under the most intense um, fire barrages. The flip side and downside of this build is that it has no repair limpets and no ability to repair itself, its, its hull in and of itself. A lot of the things that you'll be sort of encountering in Titan space do phasing hull damage, which means their hull, their damage actually goes through shields. That is true for caustic mines and caustic generators. That is true for interceptor cannon fire. That is true for glaive fire. Uh, and that may be true for other things that I kind of haven't listed now. All that in all, there's there's phasing damage that goes through your shield. So your hull will go down over a period of time as you sustain damage in, in the Titan space instances. I've personally found that these builds have more than enough hull to last hours in, in Titan space. And if you watch our live streams, you'll see that I don't know that my hull while shielded went down beyond below like 60 or 70 percent ever despite us spending hours in in that instance so i personally found that not to be a big deal furthermore it, these are builds that are meant to be flown in a wing and ideally in a flight and what i mean with that is mambas work extremely well in supporting each other and when they are escorted by fighters like the, for instance titan killer vision 2.0 um, not only can the fighters take glaives out of the equation and scouts out of the equation, which otherwise the other builds would not be able to with, with their configurations. I mean, you could technically fire missiles at scout, but good luck hitting them with these very slow, serious enhanced missile racks. Um, but in a pinch, they are also able to put a repair limpet in you, and that will give you, again, like, I don't know, 30% haul uh, top up, which, again, will make it last forever. As that entails, these are not self-reliant belts. These are not belts to go solo. 
These are builds that are meant to be used in a wing, but are highly specialized. The jury is out if they are uh, comparable in the grand scheme of things, or worse or better than, say, for example, the crate version of a bomber. I would argue most people would say the crate is better as a bomber in this configuration. I, and I understand why they say it, but part of it is I'm kind of also bored of flying the crate for a year and a half. So I'm actually very happy of experimenting with the Mamba. I found it to be performing very well with a very well-trained group of people, but that is not necessary to say that knowing what we know now with regards to what makes uh, Titan uh, hurt, uh, it can be said that this is necessarily the best, the best possible range. So armed with that information, go and build whatever you want, have fun in this game. Hopefully this gives you some kind of blueprint to work off of. We'll put the builds in the description below and eventually in over a couple of weeks, these will trickle uh, onto the Xeno Strike Force website. So you'll find them there. Um, with that, go your mankind and wing up and strike, commanders. Commander Mekin, over and out.